Happy time zone, friends. I'm Kylie, and I'm gonna show you how I use Notion to plan international travel so you can get the most out of your PTO while leaving room for those spontaneous moments that make travel so special. And knowing that I had everything planned and in my pocket with the Notion app meant that I could actually relax and enjoy the food, the history, and making friends without stressing over where I need to go next or what train to get on. Something that's on my bucket list is visiting a Christmas market in Europe. And based on just a little bit of research to start, it looks like Estonia and Tallinn specifically has the right mix of being budget friendly and the history that I love because do not travel with me if you don't like museums. So while I research this trip, you're going to come with me and I'll show you how I research, how I put together an itinerary that makes sense and how I make sure details do not fall through the cracks. Comment which country you want to visit next, and let's get started. This is my Notion dashboard, and it's really simple on purpose. I'm using kind of a bastardized version of the para system from Building a Second Brain, and it's been working well so far. I'll start by duplicating my international trip template and popping into it. So this planner has pretty much everything you need, but I like to start with the exciting stuff, which is planning the kind of activities I'm going to do while I'm there. So we are going to get to building an itinerary and these details, but I like to start with research. So to get set up, I also want to put a Google My Maps because right now this is from Japan. To do that, I'm gonna to head to Google My Maps and click create a new maps. And it's going to create a map in Google Drive. And I'm going to call this one Tallinn Save. Adding this map to your Notion board is really easy. Just click share, click anyone with the link can view, and copy the link. I'll close that, come back to my Notion board, and embed the map. Now I just need to come back over to Tallinn. And now when I add anything, it will show up here as well. And actually the first thing I like to do when researching a trip to a new place is finding the country or city's tourism board website. It's just, it's a good place to start. And what I'll do is I will save a link to this in my country general info. And that way in the future, I can just come back to this for quick reference. Okay, so visit Tallinn. That's probably the city guide that I actually want here. See, this is beautiful. Tallinn Town Hall Square is where those markets are. So let me add my first layer to this map and I'm just going to say outdoor activities. Town Hall Square, great. I'm going to add to map activities. I am going to change this group style to uniform. And then I'm going to change the color. If it's an outdoor activity, I'll make it blue because I imagine it will be cold. And there are a bazillion icons to choose from. So I will choose the tree. I'll go ahead and make more layers so I can go ahead and have those ready. So hotels, indoor activities, and one more layer to eat. Your map won't update automatically. You may need to refresh your page or close and reopen no Notion for this to show up. So I'll show you that a little bit later. In my activities and dining research, in my template, I have this already set up to show how I did it for one of my Japan trips. So I've sorted this page by city. So I had Nagoya, Osaka, Nara, and I have the properties of where it is, the type it is, and priority level. So must do and nice to do. If you need other properties, like is it wheelchair accessible? Is it kid friendly? Go ahead and add those columns too in the beginning. Because I'm just doing one city in this plan right now, I'm going to ungroup everything and I'm going to clear all of these. 
I'm going to leave the city column there though, because maybe there's a day trip option and I wanna make sure I can note that down. So let's just say the Christmas market and I'm going to create one for Tallinn. This is an icon outdoor and shopping. This is a must do. It would be the whole reason I'm planning this trip. So I'm going to copy this page and put it in. So here's where you get to have a lot of fun. I'm not worried about what I can fit into a trip. I'm not worried about, is it expensive? I'm not worried about, can we do all of it? Just anything that sounds interesting, I'm going to put in this research tab. Putting together an itinerary isn't going to be quite as simple as just listing down the must-dos in order. What we're going to want to do is group them by area or by location. Now that I'm looking at it though, Tallinn might not be the best example of this because it is a relatively smaller and walkable city. So let me show you what I'm talking about with a previous trip planned in Japan. Taking a look at everything in Tokyo, it is a massive city. So when I was putting together my itinerary, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't doing something over here in Shinjuku on the same day I wanted to be over here in Taito City or even further down near Tokyo Station. So to make sure that I'm not having us walk back and forth across the city, I'm going to take everything that I have put into my activities research and put it into this Google My Maps. I've already added the Christmas market. Let's add the viewing platform as well. And when you're doing the Google My Maps, make sure that you click on the layer that you want to add something to before you click to add it to your map. And whenever I add something new to a layer, I'm going to change to uniform style and going to edit indoor, I will make orange because it'll be warmer and let's pick an icon and then we keep going down the list so here's another great thing about planning this way i have all of my things that i'm really interested in and want to do but looking on this google map i just added the ice rink to the map and right next to it i see a brewery and tap room my husband loves breweries, so let's go ahead and add it to the map and to our activities list. So this is great because if we go ice skating, now we know we have one option of something to do before or after it. Probably after though. No beer before ice skating. And I'm going to go through the exact same process for different hotels. I'll find a couple Airbnbs, a couple hotels, and I'll also put those on the map. And that way we can choose based on both price and what it looks like, but also how far is it from the things that we want to do. So here's a quick look at what the lodging section looks like in my travel planning notion template. It's pretty simple. Again, we have the city, the name of the place, the room type, like is it an apartment? Is it a queen room, a double room? The price per night, the address, if we have it, Airbnb doesn't give you the exact address, which is a little annoying, and the URL. I have also added the two hotels I have the address for to my map. So there's one up here and then one more central in the city. Now that I have the things I wanna do and some of the places that are options to stay, let's look at making an itinerary. I have this set up as a list in a database and when you click new page it gives you day x as a new page and when you click into it here's what you get the dates and then the cities i give this one a name i'm gonna call it arrival and museum because i what i like to do when i travel is the first day i get somewhere i'll go to a museum and maybe a viewing point and that helps me get the lay of the land and appreciate what I see in the later days more because I have some context for what I'm looking at. Let's say we have an overnight flight and we're gonna get there at some point around noon, just to make this easy. So we'll do hotel check-in in the afternoon and then 
what is near this hotel that'll be easy to do when we are jet lagged? Great, Estonian History Museum Guildhall. And the notes about this museum say it doesn't take super long. So let's go ahead and add something else on here. The Tallinn City Museum. That sounds great. And then for dinner, there is a restaurant right here named Hell Hunt. That may be all we do. So evening could be sleep early. I really like the morning, afternoon, evening format of planning an itinerary because it lets you cover the things you want to and leave room to experience the areas around whatever you have planned. I found if you go hour by hour, it gets too regimented and you can start to stress out about not meeting your schedule, which kind of isn't the point of a vacation. But now we need to go through the details tab because I've shown you the fun part of planning and putting together an itinerary. The details tab is where you keep everything organized. So my first page is for visas and insurance. And here is where I just put in information on what I need to know before traveling to that country. So for example, from the any of the embassies, if there is an info for US citizens traveling to location, I definitely want to include that information and any pre-entry options. For example, when we visit Japan, there is the Visit Japan web where you can do some of your customs declarations online and get a QR code. So I have those links here. So while I'm chilling in the airport, right after we get off the plane, I can just fill those out really fast. Also travel insurance. This one's kind of controversial. I know not everyone wants to use travel insurance, but if you have travel insurance, keep it with your visa information. Next up for us is pet care. We have a cat, which makes things a little bit easier because we just need someone to drop in on her once a day. So it's very simple here. I just have trip dates, the dates that the sitter is coming, where they'll be staying, because if you're taking your pet to a boarding facility, that's important to have, cost per day, confirmation number, and where you booked it. Typically, I book through Rover. Uh, if you want my referral code, let me know. After pet care is budget planning, I like to do this pretty simply, so I have a basic table with categories for flights, hotel, boarding, transit, and so on for planned and actual. Something I didn't have on my first trip, but now I include for planning other things is a utilities line item. Renting a Wi-Fi brick or coin laundry, just having a little bit set aside means there will be fewer surprises down the line. This is also where I plan my pre-trip money tasks. So if I'm going to exchange any currency at the bank or at AAA, I'll note that down here. And I also want to note that I need to submit my travel notices to the credit card companies. The last thing you want is to be trying to buy something abroad and your card gets declined because their bank thinks that it's fraud. Some other information that's good to look up ahead of time are the most commonly accepted cards if the place you're going usually accepts cards or is a cash society, and which cards you have that have no foreign transaction fees. After planning the budget, I like to look at flight details. And again, I like to keep this really simple. So when I look at it on my phone, it's not too complicated. I have a call out for going there with airport codes, flight number, departure and arrivals, and a layover option. If you have multiple layovers, it's pretty easy just to copy this and paste again. Next up is transit. So if you're renting a car, knowing where you rented it, what car you booked, confirmation numbers, things like that, it's important to keep. And also if you plan to get a Metro card or transit pass, what the kind of card you get, is it physical or digital? And then usually I just put a link to the website that teaches you how to get it. Last is my reservations tab. I keep these separate from my hotel research and my itinerary, just so it's so much easier to find. Again, I'm building this so I can reference it on my phone later. So usually what I'll do is I'll pick, if I'm doing multiple cities, I'll create a toggle for each city and I'll note which dates. And again, I have a really basic table where it is, the time I can check in and check out, how much I spent, where I booked it, and the confirmation number. And if any of your activities need to be booked in advance, 
like restaurant reservations or tours, this is also where you can note down all of your confirmation details. Planning like this means that when I'm on the go, I can pull up my phone, check Notion, and everything that I need to know for my trip is planned out and ready. If you want to use this exact template, go ahead and click the like button, then scroll down to the description. There'll be a link there where you can copy this and plan your next trip. Thanks for watching.